Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the acute inflammatory response and anti-inflammatory drugs. Okay, so we're in the process of discussing type 2 activation of endothelial cells. Okay, so we're discussing that endothelial cells that have undergone type 2 activation will start expressing on their surface E-selectin molecules and also CXCL8 chemokine molecules. Okay, so these are the two new things that are going to be expressed on these endothelial cells, and these are going to help with uh, neutrophil extravasation. Okay, so they're going to lead to a very similar process that we saw in uh, type 1 activation, but it's going to involve slightly different molecules. Okay, so here is CXCN8 on the surface of our heparan sulfate uh, on the glycocalyx. Okay, so this is CXCL8. Now, there is another molecule that's going to be involved in the pathway um, for uh, the extravasation, uh, extravasation of neutrophils, okay? And this is, again, the intercellular adhesion molecule 1, ICAM1, that we saw earlier in uh, type 1 activated endothelial cells. This is constitutively expressed on the surface of the endothelial cells. Now, very soon we're going to see that ICAM1 is going to be upregulated in type 2 activated endothelial cells. However, that occurs later. So, initially in type what, 2 activated endothelial cells, sorry, when I said um, that it's going to be upregulated in type 1, I meant type 2. Okay, so. Type 2 activated endothelial cells start putting on their surface e selectin and CXCN8. Later on, they will start upregulating ICAM1, but they haven't done that yet. That's going to be important for monocyte recruitment, which we'll talk about in a moment. But at the moment, the ICAM1 that is on the surface of these endothelial cells is just the constitutively expressed ICAM1. Okay, so let's now talk about how these three molecules, E-selectin, CXCN8, and the constitutively expressed intercellular adhesion molecule, are going to recruit neutrophils. Now, it's a very similar process to what we saw in type 1 activation. So it's going to begin with the rolling of the neutrophil over the endothelial cell. So let me just remind you of this. So, if this is our endothelial cell here, it's now got E-selectin on its surface, and E-selectin this time is going to be responsible for the rolling. Okay, so here is our E-selectin molecule, which we will colour in in red. Okay, here. Right, uh, and it's going to bind to a ligand that is on the surface of the neutrophil. So remember, neutrophils are a very common white blood cell within the bloodstream, and they have these multi-lobed nuclei, okay? So three lobes is the sort of archetypal number to give them. Okay, so here is our neutrophil. Now, the neutrophil has a molecule known as Cyril Lewis X. So let me show this in a moment. Okay, so here, on the surface of the neutrophil, is Cyril Lewis X, uh, which is going to bind to E-selectin. Now, Cyril Lewis X is actually a tiny little molecule, and it's bound to other molecules that are on the surface of the neutrophil, okay? So even though I've drawn this as a great big box here, it's actually a tiny little molecule that's just attached off the side of other molecules, usually proteins that are on the surface of the neutrophil. Okay, so Cyril Lewis X is the ligand for e -selectin. Now, this interaction between Cyril Lewis X and e -selectin that's on the surface of these uh, endothelial cells is very, very weak, okay? So what's going to happen is that this is going to cause rolling of the neutrophil over the endothelial cell. So the neutrophil will roll, and it will continuously form and break interactions between e selectin and Cyril Lewis X. So if you imagine it rolling, okay, what's going to happen is that this bond here between Cyril Lewis X and e selectin is going to break, and as it rolls in this direction here, uh, it's going to form a new bond between this Cyril Lewis and this E selectin. So it will be continually forming and breaking bonds with Cyril Lewis and e, uh, X and E selectin. 
Okay, so this first process is known as rolling, and it slows the neutrophil down. Okay, now eventually what will happen is the neutrophil will come to a halt. So let's say over here, the neutrophil, which has deformed a bit, but never mind, that, yeah, that's just, um, I, I realised that I needed more space to draw the molecule, so I had to make it short down here. Okay, uh, that's, it's not actually deformed. Okay, that's just the picture. So, it's come to a halt, and it's now got some interactions between Salal Lewis X and E selectin, which are remaining intact, okay? So here is our E selectin in red here, and here is our Salal Lewis X. Now, the next portion of this story is exactly the same as before. What's going to happen is that you are going to uh, bind the integrin on the surface of the neutrophil, which remember is this MFA1, to the uh, immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecule on the surface of the endothelial cells. So here is the intercellular adhesion molecule 1, which is an immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecule, and here is the lymphocyte function associated antigen 1, or LIFA 1. Uh, which, remember, is an integrin, and specifically it's the alpha L beta 2 integrin. So it's alpha subunit is alpha L, and it's beta subunit is beta 2. Okay, so let's colour these in. So here is LIFA 1 in orange, and here is ICAM 1, and it's all smudged horribly there. ICAM 1, which we'll have in green here. Okay, so... Again, this interaction initially between the integrin and the ICAM1 is incredibly weak. So this at the moment is what's known as weak adhesion. And it's because this integrin, this alpha L beta 2 integrin, is not activated yet. Okay, so we need to get integrin activation. And this before in type 1 activation was undertaken by platelet activating factor acting on the platelet activating factor receptor but now we have got this new molecule we've got CXCL8 here okay this chemokine molecule which is mounted remember on the heparan sulfate proteoglycan of the glycocalyx okay so um, we'll draw CXCL8 this CXC chemokine ligand 8 in purple here. And it's going to interact with a receptor on the surface of this neutrophil. Now, the receptor that it interacts with is what is known as the CXC chemokine receptor type 1. Okay, so the neutrophils have on their surface this CXC chemokine receptor 1. And CXC chemokine ligand 1, sorry, ligand 8, rather. Um, well, dear, what am I doing? Right. Take that 8 down. Right. Okay, so the CXC chemokine ligand 8 is going to bind to the CXC chemokine receptor 1 on the surface of the neutrophil, and this will then cause uh, a downstream pathway to occur within the neutrophil, which is then going to cause the activation of the LFA1 integrin, um, and that will turn this weak bond between the LFA1 integrin and the uh, ICAM1 molecule into a very strong bond. So it will go from being a weak adhesion to being a tight adhesion. Okay, so it's going to now have a very strong bond between the two. And then what will happen is that uh, the neutrophil will then diapodease across the endothelium. And that's the exact same process as we saw in type 1 uh, activation. It's going to squeeze through the centre. And I'll try and find the picture of this. Uh, here we have it. Okay. So it's going to squeeze through the gaps between the endothelial cells, which are now bigger following type 2 activation. And as it squeezes through, uh, it will form interactions with the PCAM1 uh, cell adhesion molecules on the surface of the uh, endothelial cells. Okay. So, that will therefore lead to uh, the recruitment of more neutrophils into uh, the interstitial space where we have this infection. And these neutrophils are then going to go and attack the pathogen and phagocytose it and hopefully digest it. So they'll help to clear the infection, hopefully. 
Okay, so that's the recruitment of neutrophils. Now that is what occurs very early on in type 2 activation. So initially, when you expose endothelial cells to interleukin 1 and tumor necrosis factor alpha, then around an hour later they will have triggered type 2 activation of these endothelial cells. And these endothelial cells will now be expressing E-selectin and CXCL8, which will help in the um, recruitment of neutrophils. However, after around, uh, it can vary between 6 and 24 hours, okay, so after a certain amount of time, what happens is uh, type 2 activation evolves, it changes, and these endothelial cells stop producing more E-selectin. So they stop with the production of more E-selectin, and they start producing more of different types of molecules, okay? So new molecules are going to be um, synthesized now, okay? So the new molecules that these endothelial cells are going to start synthesizing is firstly, they're going to synthesize much more ICAM1, okay? And they're also going to create a new player here, a new cell adhesion molecule. So this one here is ICAM1, okay? The intercellular adhesion molecule 1, okay? And this new molecule that's going to be created is VCAM1, okay? Which stands for the vascular cell adhesion molecule 1. Okay, let me just move this up. So this is the vascular cell adhesion molecule 1, which these endothelial cells are going to start secreting later on in the type 2 activation. Okay, they're also going to start secrete, uh, producing the CC chemokine ligand uh, 2, okay, which again is a chemokine, this time of the family uh, CC chemokine. So again, it will be mounted on heparan sulfate, uh, polysaccharides, which are within the glycocalyx on the surface of the endothelial cells. Okay, so this chemokine is shown here in pink again. Okay, and it's a CC chemokine. So this is the CCL2, uh, which stands for the CC chemokine ligand 2. So I, remember I told you that um, there were four main families of chemokines, and well, there were four families of chemokines, and there were two that were particularly important, and those were the CXC chemokines and then also the CC chemokines. So CCL2 is a member of the CC chemokines. So this is CC chemokine ligand 2. So the two new players here are we've produced this vascular cell adhesion molecule 1, which is another uh, example of an immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecule. And we've also um, produced more, uh, well, we've also produced CCL2, which is brand new, but we've also produced more of this ICAM1, which was constitutively expressed on the endothelial cells. Now, this change in expression of molecules on the surface of the endothelial cells after around 6 to 24 hours of the inflammatory response uh, occurring is going to favour uh, the movement from recruiting neutrophils to recruiting monocytes from the blood instead. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.